You are watching UNO with Dr. Amrish Saxena. Hello students, today is Thursday 12th of December 2019 and this morning I welcome you all in 64th episode of DME UNO. Again I have come with a follow up story on Citizenship Amendment Bill. In 62nd edition, I talked about the minorities which have not been covered in this bill and in the 63rd edition, I talked about the constitutionality of this bill. And today, I will be telling you about the beneficiaries of this bill once this bill becomes an act. Now, to tell you the latest development first, both the houses of parliament have given a nod to this bill. On Monday, the Lok Sabha, the lower house, passed this bill by 311 versus 80 votes. And yesterday, the Wednesday, this was passed by the House of Elders, the Rajya Sabha, by 125 versus 105 votes. Now, as per the provisions of this bill, the illegal migrants from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan belonging to six religions, that is Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jainis, Parsis and Christians will be entitled to get the Indian citizenship, but with the deadline that those who have come before 31st of December 2014, they are entitled for the citizenship. Now, who are the real beneficiaries of this? There are 31,313 migrants who are directly benefited by this bill. This number comprises 25,447 Hindus and 5,807 Sikhs. These Hindus have basically come from Pakistan and Bangladesh and Sikhs have mainly come from Afghanistan following the unrest happened there and civil war happened post-1990. The other religious communities include 55 Christians, 2 Parsis and 2 Buddhists and none from the Jain community. Then again, there are 5 lakh Hindu Bengalis who have been left out in the NRC process that is National Register of the uh, Citizens. That process has recently been completed in Assam. And if we take a clue from the statement given by the Finance Minister of Assam, that is Hemant Biswa Sarma, he has stated that we will complete the process of granting citizenship to these Hindu Bengalis before the assembly elections due in 2021. Now, the government has been talking about conducting NRC in the entire country. If this happens, then the identification of illegal migrants will also happen and all those illegal migrants who belong to these six religions which I have already stated, they will be entitled for the citizenship of India. Now, who are the non-beneficiaries? All those Muslims who are similarly placed, but during the process they have been found illegal migrants irrespective of the fact where they have been living, whether in Assam or in any other state of the Northeast or in any other part of India, will not be entitled for citizenship. This means they have to be put in the detention centers. Now, if we give the example of Assam only, there are so many detention centers are being built and the cost of a detention center which can house 3000 people is coming at 46 crore rupees and as per the estimate of the government there will be a requirement of 200 detention centers for accommodating 6 to 7 lakh illegal migrants. So, if you look into the benefit and the cost relationship, then there seems no justification for the citizenship amendment bill. Though, as far as policy making for national security issues or national integrity issues is concerned, no such criteria can apply. But definitely, this can lead us to think and rethink the usefulness of citizenship amendment bill. 
Now, moving on to another story, I am going to give you some very interesting facts about WTO. WTO that is World Trade Organization. This is an intergovernmental organization which deals with international trade or trade between one country and another member countries and there are 164 members in this organization. This WTO also has an appellate body which is basically dealing into the trade dispute between member countries and it's an appellate body. Now this appellate body has seven members or seven judges. Now out of this number only four judges have been working for the last one year because three judges had already retired. Now on this Tuesday two more judges have retired. This means only one judge is left in this arbitration body. So the quorum is four judges. So with one judge this body is basically defunct. And how this happened? Because since last year no new appointment or reappointment have been made because for any appointment there has to be an endorsement by all the members. And the US has been creating an obstacle in this because the extent of the US is that this appellate body has overstepped its jurisdiction. And US wants that there is a need of large scale reforms in WTO and if this happens only when it will facilitate the appointments. Now we must look into this in the light of the fact that this WTO and its appellate body this deals with basically the international trade to the tune of 23 billion dollars. And if we look into the impact on India. India has already 30 cases pending in this appellate body. This includes 12 cases wherein the India is an applicant and 18 cases where India is a respondent. And if I tell you about two important cases, one is wherein India has made an appeal against the US for imposing some extra duty on Indian iron and steel. Another case is wherein India has made an appeal against the US move of increasing the immigration fee in certain categories which also include H-1B visa. About 70 countries have been pleading with the US to withdraw its objections and let the appointment of judges happen in the appellate body. But US has further threatened to withdraw the budget to withdraw the financial help that it has been giving to WTO. And if this actually happens then the WTO will be a non-functional organization from 1st of January 2020. So this might be a very precarious situation for the entire world. That is all in today's edition.